welcome to N1. Today I'm in Belgrade with EuroLeague High Flyer, Cleveland raised, Aaron White. Aaron, oh, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me on. We are very happy to have you here. We're happy to be here in Belgrade and uh, we wanted to ask how is um, this unique country of uh, Serbia treating you? Yeah, everything is good. I mean, uh, it has its uniqueness for sure, uh, but overall, uh, where we live, uh, the club, my family's happy, so it, it checks all the boxes that I need as a player to, to, to be happy here and uh, also experiencing probably the most unique culture that I've had in my uh, seven years. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. So congratulations on uh, winning the Serbian Cup. Thank you. Uh, I am aware that there was a three hour bus ride yeah. to, uh, from Niche to uh, yeah. Belgrade. Let's call it three hours. Was, yeah. oh. <laughs> uh, we, we stopped a couple of times. Uh, guys had to get off to use the bathroom and yeah, okay. we had to make a stop for some supplies and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I mean, we after the game, actually we went back to the hotel and had dinner and had like, a uh, little celebration, which I wasn't expecting. You know, I thought we would just take the bus back. But uh, whenever you win a title, I mean, it's always... Some changes to the schedule Yeah, yeah changes to the schedule. <laughs> and it's like a feeling you can't explain, you know? It, it's why we play. And uh, since I had that first feeling in Lithuania of winning the, our first cup, I've been chasing that ever since. You know, every team I go to, I mean, everyone says that's the goal is to win, but there's nothing like winning a cup or a league championship and, and then celebrating with the guys. Because it's not just... It's not like for me, it's not just that game, you know, it's we went through preseason, you go through all the practices, all the, you know, the BS that the players go through and you have like a culmination of that either with a title or a cup or whatever it is. So that's a lot of fun. Let's talk about um, the fans briefly. Serbia, Greece and Lithuania are arguably, are arguably the most uh, passionate basketball, basketball countries. But is there anything different or unique that you could uh, say about each of the fan base? Uh, all of them are for sure a little bit different. I would say, okay, it's a little bit hard because in Greece it was empty, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. But in terms of like off the, off the court and on social media, let's say, Serbia and uh, Greek fans are similar in their, let's say, passion, you know, like especially since here you have the, the rivalry with with Partizan and there we had the rivalry with Olympiakos. So like from baby until like adulthood, that's all they care about is either, you know, Red Star Partizan or Olympiakos uh, Pau. I didn't really have that same feeling in Lithuania because when I was there, it felt like the whole country loved Jogiris. I don't want to be, I don't want to like offend a Ritas fan, but it seemed like- It's the majority though. Yeah, like that. And also w when we played uh, EuroLeague, like even Ritas fans, I think, maybe I'm wrong, rooted for Jogiris. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that a yeah, part yeah. of them do. Like, I think that people who actually love basketball and they yeah, are they proud appreciate that Jogiris is playing in the highest league. You yeah, know, yeah. So. so they wanted to see, like, it's more like a country love than it split with the team. So that would be the biggest difference for me. At this point in your career, you've been uh, playing for a while. And do you get distracted by, the, by fans or? No, I mean, this year I had a different experience because I was out for so long, especially here during the like the EuroLeague anthem, you know, like everyone lines up and they play the song and... So like as a as an outsider, let's say I wasn't like dressed, I was like just watching the fans, you know? I was like, wow, like, this is crazy. But as a player, like if you're in the starting five or you're on the bench, you're not watching the crowd, you know? It's like that different uh, perspective. So it was kind of cool to, to sit back and kind of see like, it gave me an appreciation for, for what we do and um, like what we do matters to people in this country and people in, in this city. So that was kind of cool. Out of these three uh, Serbian veteran teammates of yours, um, okay. Branka Lazic, Markus Simonovic and Stefan Markovic, which one do you think is the most likely to become a head coach after the head campaign? coach? Oh, it's easy. Simonovic. I mean, he's already like now that we have uh, like limitations on roster he's sometimes sitting out you know out of the 12. okay so for example in the cup he didn't dress and he was behind the bench and you can just like first of all you can hear him like yelling but you can see his mind like working about like different options that we can go to and he has a great relationship with uh our head coach so he's telling him options that he sees as a player and um yeah, hundred percent. I mean, he's going to be a head coach one day, I believe, and uh, I think he'll be a good one. You know, he sees the game great. He has a lot of experience. Uh, he can relate to players, so I think he'll be one of those guys that 
in the next couple of years we'll transition into coaching and uh, and be a good one. Another quiz question for you. On July 6th of 2019, Washington Wizards traded your draft rights to the Brooklyn Nets on a three-team trade. Do you remember which team was the third? I have options for you if you want. Uh, Charlotte Hornets, no. San Antonio Spurs, yeah, San Antonio. Toronto. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, San Antonio. <laughs> and uh, do you uh, do these kind of NBA trades still uh, like make you feel any type of way? Do you still have a, a that, wish to play? And, uh, and, or? That one is actually I, I don't know if I want to get into it, but it's a, it's <laughs> it's a very interesting story. It wasn't like some of these trades happen and the guy that gets traded is like, wait, what, I got traded? That summer is before I signed in Milan, and I was actually deciding between, I had a deal in place with Washington and uh, had the offer from Milan, and I was trying to decide what I wanted to do. So that was kind of a, let's say, like a rug that was pulled under my, my feet. You know, it was kind of a surprise. I can remember sitting at my table in my kitchen back home and my agent calling me with the news I was traded, and it was kind of out of left field. Uh, okay. So kind of took away that option that I had. So yeah, I don't want to get into like detail, detail, but it was it was it wasn't just one of those things where like oh I got traded, you know. It yeah. was kind of a back channel type thing. So yeah, it was interesting and definitely a story that I've I've told a lot of times, uh, but not on camera. So what is your relationship with the uh, following NBA? Do you still follow NBA? Uh, no, yeah. not very well. I mean, I'll follow the playoffs. Uh, I like to watch the playoffs. I, I struggle watching the regular season because there's just like no passion or like defense or. Goes left. Uh, see, no rim protection. Yeah, that was a defensive breakdown right there. I mean, I know I know they're like playing defense. Like I'm not ignorant and say like, oh, they don't try. But the, it's just like there's so many games, you know, like if, if you played 82 regular season games in Europe, it would be the same. Like it's diluted a little bit. Whereas, Something has to give sort of. Yeah, yeah so, like I mean, the guys aren't like robots, you know, they need to save themselves or if they're on back to backs, like it's only normal to like maybe give 80% instead of 100%. That's that's the biggest difference for me. I love EuroLeague because every game is like crazy, you know, like regular season game between last place team and first place team is, can be a six point game and come down to the last two minutes, you know, that- Breach! Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> so um, that's, the, that's the thing for me that uh, I don't think a lot of like casual NBA fans know. And that's why I said before we were talking about EuroLeague, I think it would, I think the product could work in the NBA, I mean, in the States, you know, like I think uh, Americans would appreciate EuroLeague basketball. And I think they would see a lot of players that they know from college be like, oh yeah, I'll tune into this game. And then maybe the it would pick up steam. So yeah, small rant, but that's how I feel about that. Two truths and a lie. Okay. And identify a lie, okay? okay. Um, you never shot free throws below 70% in a season. You have made the most free throws in Iowa history. And the third, um, your dunk has been selected as your league's top play. Which one is the lie? I don't think I've ever shot under 70%. Or did I in Zenit? You answered your question. I did in Zenit, huh? Yeah, I, I shot through those terrible that year. So what's the, oh, I, well, I 66% was. 66% if you want to know. Yeah? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> I was young though, so we'll say that. Yeah, so, um, but it's pretty, pretty impressive um, with the free throws and I, most I used throws. to just like, literally like drive into the paint and just. Go for it. Yeah, just like <laughs> jump into people and shoot a, a bunch of free throws. So yeah, in Iowa I shot like, like eight or nine free throws a game maybe, like my last two years. We have three playmakers all played with you in Jalgaris and okay. now are scattered across Europe. Walkup, Westerman, Walters. Who would you start, bench, and cut? Oh, come on now. Come on. Start. <laughs> what is it? Start, bench, and cut. Start, bench, and cut. Westerman, that, Walters. That's terrible. First of all, Nate's my teammate now. <laughs> Thank God you didn't throw Pangos in there. Okay, start, bench, and cut. I mean, they're all, one of them's gonna be mad at me for sure. I'll start Nate, because he's my teammate now. Sounds bad, but I love Nate. Do I bench or cut? I have Tom. a very good explanation that I think I could help you, but then you make your own decision. So, uh, you're gonna say I could Leo, cut one of them? Leo, and he, Leo he's injured. been injured, yes. Uh, yes, so. bravo. Okay, yes, I'm cutting Leo. Leo. Sorry, Leo. <laughs> yeah, you're injured, that's why you're cut. And uh, I'll, bench, I'll bench Tom, but he'll be my sixth man. You know, he'll come in and he'll still play like 28, 30 minutes, so. He's still there for he you can on play the bench. With, He can play with Nate. They can uh, handle the ball together and 
Yeah, yeah, you're a really nice time. friend. We got that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's. Oh, I'm glad that. Uh, not glad, but it's easy that Leo's hurt, so I can, I can, I can cut him. Um, we have been going through your highlights to pick one of the best dunks you've ever made, and it was really hard. Okay. Uh, because you have a lot of pretty impressive ones. Um, Thank you. So, I'm gonna ask you this: What is your most memorable? A uh, dunk, or maybe it's not even a dunk, so uh, a play, I don't know. Yeah, we can do memorable dunk. All my dunks are the same, in my mind. I know maybe not to the like viewer's eye, but in my mind they're all like off of two feet and two hands. And usually like coming from the left, I have a lot of lobs from Jalgiris and in general fast break, I'm usually coming from the right side because that's how I like to jump. So I would say for me, my most memorable one was um, we were playing POW and I took a pass from, I think, Derek Walton. And I dunked it one-handed, and I think it was an and one. And, and off to the races. Oh, oh my goodness! A fast break throwdown in transition. Jalgiris Kaunas looking to take this crowd out of the game. And the only reason I'm saying that is because it was like probably my only highlight dunk that's one-handed. You know, every other one is the same, so that's the only one that sticks out in my mind. Because a lot of the other ones, if you told me, I, I wouldn't really remember. But that one I remember because like I did it one-handed, and I was like. <laughs> that was sweet. You proud. Know? Yeah, proud. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow, you did something different for once, you know? Because even like, even on a fast break, if like there's no one around, I'm still gonna go two hands. Just it's just more comfortable for me. So I mean, it's, that's your that's your yeah. dog. Like. So let's let's count that one. Okay. And now since we're talking about um, you know, about a, a game, a dunk, and uh, end one, uh, I would like. To have. Oh gosh. Oh god. <laughs> you know it. It's coming. Your best N1 celebration. My best N1 celebration. I mean, we're in a restaurant. I'm I sure they won't I, mind. I can't yell. <laughs> no, I can't do that. You I think you know me by now. I'm not I'm not like super emotional. Like I can't yell in a restaurant and say N1. So we'll just be like I'll be like my friend, Nate Walters, who doesn't celebrate any any big play. I always joke him about that and he'll just be like, yeah, you know, like this is something I do all the time, you know, like it's normal, you know? Yes. Thank you so much. Appreciate it's been, it. It's been awesome. Thank been you fun. very much. Thank you.